started your timer and here is your question. Recently, I had a new school discussion, which is already on online available. So this is the old one. Is calling. Sorry. So if you have read and understood, can you bring it clinical examination station? Yes, kindly I am ready. Your, kindly begin your session. Yes, I will start by wash my hands. Uh, yes. Good morning, I'm Mr. al Ghazir, one of surgical doctors here. Can I confirm your name and age, please? Yes, I'm Smith, 23 years old. Yes, uh, nice to meet you, Smith. Today I'm going to examine your shoulder. It will include the uh, look, feel, movement, and asking you to do some special movement. Uh, do you agree with this? Yes. Do you have any pain at the moment? No, not at so all. So if, if you don't mind, uh, can you take off your shirt, please? Okay. And uh, keep with your uh, underweight, please. Uh, okay. Can you stand up for me, please? Yes. Um, yeah, now I will take a close look for you in front of you, then uh, from the side, and from the back, and from the other side. Searching yes. for uh, any scar, skin changes, any uh, trauma, a deformity, scoliosis, any swelling, uh, any deformity or uh, a deformity from uh, fracture. Okay. Um, uh, now uh, I will ask you to push your hands against the wall of the room okay. uh, to detect any winging of the scapula. All uh, right. So if you experience any pain, let me know okay. and I will uh, try to be uh, gentle as much as you can. Then I will ask him to face me. We will start to, uh, now I am going to feel your uh, bones and shoulder. Uh, I will start by temperature, by the back of my hand, comparison with side by side. Good. Then after that, after that, I will uh, start to detect any tenderness. If you feel any pain, let me know. I will start from the sternoclavicular joint, passing through clav clavicle. Then a clavicular joint, then a coracoid process about two centimeters below the clavicular end, and the, <clears throat> uh, the, the head of the uh, humerus yes. and the greater university. Then ask them, uh, please uh, turn uh, around to feel the border of the scapula from behind and yes. the spine of the also from the scapula. Now I will, uh, can you turn again? Now uh, I'm going to. Uh, uh, ask you to do some movement. I will start by some compound movements in form of uh, external rotation and uh, with abduction and internal rotation with abduction. Then I will start to do a simple movement in form of, I will ask the patient to, do, uh, to lift her uh, hand one by one uh, up as much as you can, then turn uh, back as much as you can, uh, flexion and extension. Then yes. can you lift your hand uh, to the side as much as you can in form of abduction. Yes. Then downward to cross the, the body as much as you can in form of abduction. Then Very I good. will ask the patient uh, to uh, put uh, uh, the elbow to the side of the body and the external rotated and the internal rotated inside and outside. Uh, then I will ask the patient that now I will do uh, this movement by myself to detect okay. any clavicles on any click from the joint one by one, flexion, extension, internal rotation, external rotation, abduction, abduction. Yes. Then I will ask the patient that please, I will test now supraspinatus muscle in form of little bit abduction and don't let me to push it uh, side by side. Then I will ask the patient also to, uh, I will lift your uh, hand uh, to the side as a full abduction, then little bit downward your hands uh, step by step slowly to detect any impingement of the of the uh, rotator cuff muscle or yes. the capsule of the joint uh, side by side also. Now I will ask the patient to uh, turn around and uh, uh, ask him to uh, push against my hand with the palm facing backward to detect the subscapularis muscle 
also yes. I will feel the border of the scapula with uh, in relation to uh, during the abduction. Um, yes. Uh, we'll ask the patient to bend the elbow and then uh, with uh, external rotation against resistance to detect any uh, uh, relation of tendinitis of uh, infraspinatus and the teres minor muscle. Uh, also, I will do what, uh, what's called uh, uh, as a test to detect the supraspinatus, both the abduction, uh, 90 degree, flexion 90 degree. With the what, sump, what is the name of the test? Um, can uh, test... Um, Empty canvas, uh, yes. Yes, yes. Uh, to detect any supraspinatus muscle uh, yes. tenderness. Uh, then uh, now. Um, how, how, how would you yes. test it? What instructions would you give to the patient? I will ask the patient to put the uh, shoulder in a 90 degree abduction, then flexion with the thumb uh, to the floor. Okay. Then I will push against him. Downward. Raise your arm. Uh, raise your arm and then return it slowly to the neutral position. Yes. Okay. Next. Yes. And uh, uh, this, uh, as regards the, the special test yes. uh, and impingement, I finished my examination. You can rest now. I will pass my uh, notes to my consultant to figure out uh, your issue. Today I examined uh, Mr. Smith, 23 years old, who presented uh, for regular checkup uh, for. Um, uh, for uh, her, uh, his uh, shoulder joint uh, yeah. on examination, uh, uh, general look, no, no apparent deformity or scars or, def or muscle wasting or swelling, uh, on palpation, no tenderness or a change in the movement and no winging of the scapula. Just uh, on, uh, on movement of the right shoulder, we detected the uh, tenderness and the limitation of range of movement, especially in uh, abduction and the uh, impingement regarding to supra uh, spinous muscle arc, uh, but uh, also a diminished uh, in external uh, rotation. So uh, my uh, my uh, main differential diagnosis will be a supraspinatus muscle tear or uh, impingement. But I also uh, consider the other pathology sh showing uh, shoulder pain in form of adhesive uh, capsulitis, sub deltoid or sub acromial tendinitis, uh, uh, all arthropathy. Uh, yes. So I will I will manage the uh, patient in form of uh, routine uh, investigation as inflammatory marker oh, to uh, yes. Uh, yes. What, would you, what examinations or what else would you do to complete your examination? Yes, to complete my examination, I will uh, examine shoulder above, cervical spine, and shoulder below. Uh, uh, not shoulder, elbow. Uh, uh, my joint blue. I am. Yes, I'm yes, sorry. Yes, yes. Uh, elbow and the complete neurovascular examination of the upper limb. Very good. Uh, yes. The investigation uh, will include radiology in form of a uh, plain X-ray, AB, and uh, yes. scapular Y and uh, uh, axillary view. Also, yes. I may arrange MRI to detect any other pathology in, involving uh, the capsule absence yes. of reseps or uh, osteoarthritis. Uh, yes. This uh, regarding the investigation, uh, the, the management include non-operative and operative. Yes. Non-operative. Uh, uh, patient uh, is an old patient, not this yes. one, 70 years old, and patient comes with rotator cuff injury or rotator, yes. rotator cuff tear. What management yes. would you offer to that patient? Yes, as regards the old age, I will uh, offer firstly the non-operative in form of physical therapy, pain relief, uh, local uh, injection of steroid. And uh, if field of uh, this, I will uh, ask for operative in form of uh, uh, arthroscopy or open surgical uh, release of the impingement of the tendon. Uh, this is the management. Okay. Uh, think carefully and then tell me. This is the young patient. And if yes. the old patient with rotator cuff injury comes, what test, what special test in examination you will not do or you will do? How the examination of a young, healthy, or young person, young actor with uh, a subacromial impingement different, yes. is different from an old man with rotator cuff tear. What examination difference is there? Yes, uh, according to the clear? yes. Yes, according to the compound movement. Yes, please. Any shoulder examination you are doing, how it will be different, or would it be the same? This is yes. my question. As regard as the old age, avoid yes. Yes, please. compound movement uh, examination, but at the young, it can be done. 
as due to the laxity of the capsule may be leading to no no you have to think of the condition there is impingement syndrome impingement condition and there is rotator cuff tear what movements will be different or what examinations or special tests you will not do or you will do okay this is the homework question okay thank you uh, right now it was very good one thing but then uh, purpose of practicing with me is that you always come or you always take some homework with you so that you can improve next time when you were doing it was very good very good very good in palpation when you were doing uh, in the movements uh, when you were asking the patient to do active movements uh, and you were palpating then you had to check for the crepitus as well Yes this, is, yes, this is something you missed. And then uh, you had, when you were doing palpation, you had to check for the radial and brachial pulses. Yes. In the shoulder examination, right? And then yes. uh, special test, you told me all. Yes. Yes. And then uh, for neurological examination, you had to do the motor examination for the long thoracic nerve. You did, you did do, or you asked the patient to push against the wall. So that was done. But there yes. was the sensory and motor examination of the axillary nerve. Uh, sensory, you did not check for the sensation, did you? You did check for the de deformity because you as, did as say that. Axillary, as, a, axillary as regards nerve. the axillary nerve, I, I, I asked that if the if the thumb to the to the roof will 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 test the deltoid muscle. To the to that is to the, the motor power you checked, not the sensation. Yes. yes. Yes, and the rest it was good, uh, except for the last question that you got. The last the question, uh, I need I need to know the the answer. The, you the answer, you. yes, of the last question, please. Maybe Doctor Avishek can help you. Otherwise, I, I'm not going to answer it. You, it will be your homework question. You will read and you. Will um, tell if it. you would ask me, uh, I would just say like, if it is a case of rotator cuff tear, I would do the specific movements for different muscle. And it, uh, in case of uh, adult patient, like uh, if it is a subacromial impingement, yes. the empty can test and the <clears throat> and the painful arc that will specify regarding this uh, for adult patient. Um, so I know nothing more an, about it this. It is an adult patient. It's always adult. Patient, adult. Yes. It means yes. it's a young patient, healthy, which is actor, or it's yeah. an old patient which might have rotator cuff pain. Rotator cuff tear. Yeah, ma'am. Good. And uh, about uh, the examination, uh, Dr. Mohammed, uh, I uh, actually someone asked in the group. So, how, like, what you would do for the empty can test? It's important for this station. So, can you please just repeat again? Empty test for yes. empty can test. MT yes, can. for the supra. Yes. So, uh, yeah, test. for the supraspinatus. Yeah. Yes, empty can test. Uh, you you can ask the patient. Uh, to put the, the the hand in the shoulder in abduction about ninety degree, okay. Okay. Then okay. Ask the patient to rotate to rotate the 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 arm about ninety degree flexion with okay. with the thumb with the thumb uh, to the floor downward. So uh, I think uh, if you can just look at the geeky videos, how do you see actually here? Actually, the <clears throat> arm is extended, arm not flexed. So only the sorry, the angle. It's not flexed. So, no. ma'am, it is uh, the sorry. It's not the arm. It's the uh, elbow no, joint. It is elbow. extended. Yes, shoulder. Yes. Shoulder. It shoulder. is fully extended, and the shoulder is ninety degree flexed and slightly yes, yes. forward, thumb facing downward, and you will just push against this hand actually on the external surface. Like, can you please push against my hand? Something like that. You have to check the motor power to do yes. the empty can test. So here the thumb movement, actually the can is facing downwards, something like that. You are uh, dripping something from a can, empty can. So that is why it is named the empty can test. So you will just put some pressure against patient, patient's hand and you will ask the patient, can you please put some pressure against my hand, something like that. So just go through the video, it will just, uh, make your conception more clear. And about the two tests, like external rotation against resistance and external rotation in abduction. So external rotation in abduction, that is called horn blower sign, which actually indicates 
in the teres minor one, right? And external rotation against resistance, that is normally indicates that is uh, the infraspinatus. So whenever external rotation against resistance, you just ask the patient to flex the elbow joint 90 degree and about 10 degree abduction of the shoulder joint, then ask the patient to put uh, some pressure external. Early. And in case of horn blower sign, both the elbow joint, both the arm 90 degree position, and you will passively externally rotate the hand of the patient and ask the patient to keep steady in that position. If the patient cannot keep steady in that position, that means there is some kind of tear. And if there is weakness against your resistance, it means some kind of tendonitis. So two basic difference like about the uh, about the um, teres minor one. So teres minor can be tendonitis, so there may be teres minor tear, something like that. So these are just little things you just, uh, if you just see the video and go through the notes, it will be more helpful. And this station came several times in several. the past. It's yes, ma'am. Very important. And so recently, just grab it, yeah. Recently, we, I have uh, presented with the new uh, shoulder joint question. So look through, it's on 26th, I, I think, October. Yeah, Dr. So, Pravjit Singh actually new, performed as far as I can remember, ma'am. Yeah, very yes. excellently. Yeah, so that please go same. back and listen to that station as well. How that one is different to this one. Uh, yes. question and then examination as well and then yes sorry about stop. started the timer and here is your question Yes. So if you have read and understood, considering a critical care scenario, kindly tell yes. me, how would you manage this patient? Uh, yes, I will manage this patient by, um, uh, by assessing here, uh, by doing, uh, by doing X-ray investigations. Uh, I will uh, check first for a, a, a patent airway and the proper breathing and adequate circulations. Um, and it uh, determines the cause of her uh, less surgery, um, doing ultrasound of the neck to, um, uh, to, uh, to assess the thyroid, and doing iodine uh, and further on iodine uptake scan. Okay. Then Can manage. The tell me what are the normal values of T3, T4? Normal values of T3. Um, okay. Or uh, you'll read this. Okay, can you please tell me what are the what are the clinical features of uh, hypothyroidism? How would you know? Because this patient presented with low T3, T4. So, what are the clinical features? If you can give me six examples, please. Uh, yes, the clinical features is uh, confusion and uh, yes. restlessness and uh, uh, cold intolerance and uh, mood disturbance. Um, okay. Uh, good, uh, weight gain, I was yes. and, um, yes. <clears throat> and also um, anemia, low HP is already written there, so delayed reflexes. Okay, can you please tell me uh, what might be the cause? How would you classify the causes of hypothyroidism? Yes, there may be primary or secondary causes. Yes, uh, primary causes like Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Um, Decker van thyroiditis. Um, uh, this is it's, it's a primary also due to um, thyroid anti thyroid uh, 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 drugs like thyroids. Um, uh, okay, and autoantibodies. Um, okay, this patient 
is not taking her medications regularly. Yes. Why this why this information is important for you to know as a surgeon? Uh, yes, because um, why this is important? Yes, because it, for you as, as a surgeon, yes. Uh, because the patients uh, may develop this, uh, serious complications like uh, exedema, coma. Very and, good, excellent. Tell me more, please. And also maybe cardiovascular complications like um, uh, car um, ischemic cardiac, ischemic cardiac uh, disease. Dysfunction, yes, very good. Ischemic cardiac dysfunctions. Also Increased can... sensitivity to medications could be there. Very good. Okay, you know this answer. Can you please tell me what measures would you take to improve the compliance of the medication? Yes, I will uh, to improve the compliance of medications. I will uh, make the a single dose as a tablet medication, single dose rather than a, do, a single dose only. And yes. also to be, to be in the morning uh, so that the patients can remember it easily. And also, um, <clears throat> and also- uh, um, You'll involve the family and friends. Yes, and, and, and advise the patients about the adverse Regular. effects and the relapsing, uh, relapsing effects that may occur if you stop the medications. Okay, and for the regular examination, you'll yes. ask the patient. Okay, very good. Okay, can you please tell me, how would you monitor that the patient is taking regular medications? What tests would you do? Uh, total T3 and T4. And? And... Um... Any other? Research. Sorry. Hello. To, uh, total and uh, total T three and T four and assessing the patient clinically. Okay. Uh, how would you know what are the differences in T three and T four? How would you know which one is um, or what are the differences between T three and T four? Yes, the T uh, three is uh, biologically active and unbounded to the proteins. Yes. While the T four is uh, less active and bound to plasma proteins. Okay. Anything else? Um, no, that's I know. T4 is in uh, produced in thyroid gland, 80%, and the other one is only 20%. Okay, there are a list of four, five, six functions written in the... Can you please tell me about the mechanism uh, of... Uh, if you can under, uh, help me understand from where this T3 and T4 are synthesized and how whole process of their synthesis, T3 and T4, please. Uh, yes, um, the iodide is, uh, firstly, iodide is converted by tyrosine kinase enzyme into iodine. Um, then iodine is binded to, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, no, they start no, with no. trapping, begin with ions, uh, no. enter the, yes. Uh, uh, I don't know if, uh, firstly, uh, um, as the iodide is uh, enters the thyroid gland by bumping, yes. and then uh, it convert it is converted to iodine by the peroxidase enzyme. Uh, the iodine then is binded uh, to the um, uh, is binded to ty tyrosine, giving uh, monoiodotyrosine and diiodotyrosine. Uh, yes. Then after that, one mon monoiodotyrosine plus uh, diiodotyrosine gives uh, the T3, and uh, uh, two diiodotyrosine combined together to give the T4. Okay. All right, can you please also tell me uh, how would you differentiate in patient with uh, primary hyperthyroidism hyper, hyper and secondary hyperthyroidism? How would you differentiate? Hyper? Yes, hyper. As in primary hyperthyroidism, as there will be a, 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 a decrease the TSH yes. as a negative feedback of increased T3 and T4, while secondary hyperthyroidism. Uh, there will be increased both TSH and T3 and T4. Okay, good. All right. Can you please tell me why hemoglobin is low in this patient? Why hemoglobin is low, low is low? in this patient? Yes, please. What is the mechanism? Um, uh, um, due to uh, because uh, as a secondary to sepsis. No. Uh, Auto associated autoimmune condition. What is that called? Um, pernicious anemia. Okay, tell me more. Uh, uh, no. uh, yes, uh, uh, yes, because due to the pernicious anemia. 
Yes, uh, deficiency of what? Uh, vitamin B12. Leading to lack of anemia. intrinsic factor. Yes. Okay. Uh, what advice, nutritional advice would you give to the patient? And nutritional advice. Um, yes. Okay, the wish, uh, nutritional advice is... Um, Oh, okay. Are there any uh, ma uh, markers that you'll advise or you'll check? Tumor markers? Any tumor markers that you'll? T tumor markers? Yes. Or the um, markers of against the uh, antibody? Maybe uh, amyloid for uh, amyloid. Uh, no, it's not a tumor markers. No, against That's... auto antibodies. You'll read, you'll, you'll read these are in the, in the notes. What? These are in the notes, or uh, traditional notes. Okay. okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so my as a questions, I missed uh, the normal value of T3 and T4. Yes. And also that um, as fluid given and the tumor yes. marker. Yes. Okay. Um, any other nutritional advice you'll give because patient is anemic, so you have to. Uh, yes, I have. All right, and then started your time. Okay, and here is your question. Right, if you have read and understood, can you begin your exam? Yes, I'm ready, ma'am. Yes, I'm ready. Um, I will start by uh, washing my hand. Uh, yes. Good morning. I'm Mr. Ghazir, one of surgical Dr. Z. Can I confirm your name and age, please? I'm Thomas, 72 years old. Nice to meet you, Thomas. Today I'm going to examine your uh, the, uh, lower limb, uh, lower uh, your uh, legs. Uh, yeah, due to uh, yeah, evaluate your arterial examination of vascular uh, vascular uh, arteries in your legs, it will include the closed lock to your uh, uh, hands, face, uh, feel your uh, tummy, and the uh, lower uh, in the, your legs. Do you agree with this? Yes. Do you have any pain at the moment? No. So if you uh, if you don't mind, can you take off your chair, please, yes. and keep with your uh, short. And lay down on the couch, 45 degree, please. Now I will yes. take a close look in your hands. If you don't mind, can you uh, raise your hand in front of you for me like this? Okay. I will uh, search you for any uh, staining, ulcer, tissue loss. Uh, can you turn over for me, please? Yes. Any deformity in, in jewels? Now I will uh, feel, uh, I will also look for a chest for any bypass scar or so on or cabbage uh, uh, surgery scar. And now uh, I will uh, uh, squeeze your finger uh, to detect capillary fill, maybe a little bit uncomfortable. Uh, now I will feel the pulse in your uh, hands and uh, feel in the other side to detect any radio radial uh, delay. Also, I will feel the temperature from the distal to proximal yes. comparison with both sides. Okay, now I yes. will feel uh, also the brachial pulse on both sides. Now I will feel the pulse also in your uh, neck, carotid pulse in both sides. Uh, now uh, I will uh, measure the blood pressure in your hands. Also now I will take, uh, uh, can you, uh, I will fill out the, uh, the bed now, please. I will yes. feel the pulse in your uh, abdomen, in your tummy, I'm sorry, maybe a little bit uncomfortable. Then I will take a close look from the uh, end of the bed. 
to detect any scar, any ulcer, tissue loss, uh, gangrene, uh, or any skin shining. Uh, and now I will feel the temperature of your uh, foot from downward, backward, lateral side, and the uh, uh, front and the medial side. Uh, now I will squeeze the, your toes, please. Maybe a little bit uncomfortable. And then I will uh, gap or fanning between your toes to detect any uh, ulcer or gabbing. Now, do you have any hip pain? I will uh, lift your leg up to detect any heel ulcer to the right uh, leg and left leg. Okay, so now uh, I will feel uh, pulse in your groin. Can you lower down your uh, short, please? I will detect the femoral pulse bilateral. And uh, at the same time, I will feel the radial pulse to detect any radio femoral uh, delay. I will now uh, uh, listen the, uh, the uh, pulse on your groin to detect any perwe. Then I will go through uh, popliteal pulse. Now I will take the weight of your knees to detect deeply the pulse in your knees, uh, both sides. Then I will go distally to detect the, the pulse, feel the pulse, uh, both dorsalis pedis and the first web space and the posterior tapial pulse bilaterally uh, behind the medial malleolus. Okay. Yes. If, uh, I, uh, if uh, I failed to detect any pulse, I will use the Doppler to detect the flow, monophasic or biphasic or triphasic flow. Okay. Now I will, uh, <clears throat> uh, now I will, if I detect any signs of ischemia, I will uh, go uh, through what's called Berger test, a Berger angle to detect Berger angle. Yes. Uh, I will ask the patient, do you have any hip pain? Then I will uh, raise the leg. Uh, 90 degree by 90 degree till detect any pallor at the at the, the foot at the sole of the leg and I will measure the leg if I detect it positive uh, normal till 90 degree no pallor if I detect any pallor at less than 90 degree I will ask the patient to uh, turn your leg uh, outward and I will uh, look for a reperfusion a hyperemia in both sides then uh, if uh, I have uh, uh, a time, I will do what's called ankle brachial uh, pressure index. I will detect the systolic pressure in both arms. Then I will uh, start uh, by using Doppler. Uh, then I will start by uh, detecting the ankle uh, pressure, systolic pressure, by inflating the uh, cuff uh, of sphingomanometer around the cuff muscle. Before I inflate, I will detect the pulse, a posterior tibial pulse, by Doppler. Then I will elevate the pressure till disappear. Then release again to detect the pulse, the flow again with the Doppler. I will tell the patient that the jelly, the jelly may be a little bit cold, discomfortable. Uh, I will uh, compare the ankle break, uh, break pressure index in both sides, right leg and the left leg. Then I will document. And now I will uh, remove the gel for the patient with the tissue. I will thank and uh, ask the patient also to move the foot, uh, the toes to detect the uh, movement of the foot. Uh, I will thank the patient. Then uh, I will uh, uh, tell him uh, to you can dress now. I will yes. pass my uh, notes to my consultant to figure out your can issue. You, yes, please present yes. your case now. Yes, I, today I examined Mr. Thomas, seventy-two uh, years old, Good. who presented with. Uh, a bilateral lower limb collocation on examination. Uh, there, uh, 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 there is uh, no tissue loss, no ulcer, yes. uh, mm -hmm. no signs of ischemia. Uh, yes. Away from undetected, away from undetected uh, dorsalis pedis or posterior tapial pulse uh, at the right lower limb, uh, while detected on the left one. Uh, Berger's angle uh, is about uh, 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 seventy. Uh, with reperfusion hyperemia. Uh, okay. The ankle brachial pressure index is about uh, uh, 0.7 uh, okay. in the right lower limb. To complete uh, my examination, I will do a neurological examination of the lower limb, vascular examination of the upper limb, cardiovascular examination, and the abdominal examination to detect, uh, make sure of any abdominal aortic aneurysm. Very good. Uh, uh, for the aortic, great. Okay. Yes. Uh, right. So, what are you, are you told differential diagnosis to do? 
Yes, my, my, my differential diagnosis is peripheral lower uh, vascular disease due to diabetic or atherosclerotic uh, vascular disease. Yes. Uh, what images would you ask for this patient? How would you manage yes. this patient? The management, uh, including firstly the uh, investigation form Very of good. protein at blood glucose, uh, yes. uh, lipid profile, uh, yes. and also according to imaging, I will start by duplex arterial, arterial yes. duplex of the post lower limb. And yes. if there is a plan for uh, surgery, I will order CT or MR uh, angiography. Yes. I will detect the site of occlusion, presence or absence of distal run runoff, and the yes. ebonoid. I will uh, start by uh, limit the risk factor as lipid, antiplatelet, and the control blood glucose. Yes. And, the and what treatment can you suggest to the patient? For this patient, I, su I suggest uh, start by medical and the risk factor control. control. Uh, but I will detect, I will uh, depend on the imaging. If there is a small stenotic segment, I will start by endovascular stent or uh, uh, dilatation, uh, angioplasty or a long segment, I will uh, go for bypass. If there is any tissue loss or uh, wrist pain, I will go for uh, either tissue loss, uh, gangrene for amputation or sympathectomy for wrist Very pain. Good. Okay, how would you define critical limb ischemia? Yes, critical limb ischemia is a condition uh, characterized by wrist pain, tissue loss, yes. uh, ankle brachial pressure index is uh, less than 0.4 uh, and the Berger's yes. angle between 25 to 30. Okay. Uh, this, right. Uh, how do you, this is, Ben has gone, okay. Now, just for my knowledge, I want to know uh, if, how do you calculate ABPI, ankle systolic pressure, brachial systolic pressure? How do you? Yes, calculate? as regard uh, ABPI, I will measure. The highest, the highest systolic pressure on both arms, yes. and then I, I will uh, put it over the the systolic pressure of every limb, and yes. I will measure ankle brachial index in each limb according to the the value. Very good. The normal Excellent. is between more than one, the mild, moderate, severe, yes. 0 0.7, 0 0.7 to one, uh, 0.5 to 0.7, uh, less than 0.5. This will be mild, moderate, and severe. The first one is indicated to uh, usually with intermittent collocation. The second one, 0.5 to 0.7, usually with wrist pain. The third one, uh, less than 0.5, is indicated to critical limb ischemia. Very good, very good, excellent. Thank you. Thank, thank you, ma'am. Thank you. I think you covered everything in this one. I. Anyone else want to give feedback? I don't think we missed anything. Thank, thank you, ma'am. No, ma it it was good, ma'am. It's started your timer and here is your question. Old station, so nothing much. I'll ask. Okay, ma'am. Let's just discuss. All right, so if you have read and understood, considering it surgical anatomy station, kindly tell me which part of the organ are you looking at, this one? Um, I'm looking at the right okay. lateral side of okay. the neck region and how uh, shoulder, divide, part of the shoulder. Yes, how would you divide this part of the neck? So I would like to divide this part of the neck uh, where like uh, anterior triangle into posterior triangle and the supraclavicular region. Yes, kindly tell me the boundaries of anterior triangle, please. So anterior triangle is uh, bounded anteriorly by the midline. It is situated on either side of the neck. And uh, this triangle is formed by anteriorly by the midline, an imaginary line, and superiorly the ramus of the mandible, and uh, posteriorly by the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid. Good. 
Okay, then this entire triangle is further divided into how many triangles? So this entire triangle is further divided into three sub triangles that Very are good. called uh, the digastric or submandibular triangle, uh, the muscular triangle, and uh, the uh, carotid triangle. Kindly please tell me the boundaries of each of these triangles. So the digastric triangle or the submandibular triangle it is bounded superiorly by the in the ramus of the mandible and uh, uh, in the midline, uh, it is uh, bound, uh, just lateral to the midline, it is bounded by the anterior belly of the digastric and inferiorly, inferior, uh, posterior inferiorly, it is bounded by the posterior belly of the digastric. And then comes uh, the muscular triangle. The muscular triangle is actually bounded uh, by superiorly by the posterior belly of the digastric and uh, uh, posterior inferiorly, it is bounded by the superior belly of the omohyoid and anteriorly, it is bounded by the uh, an imaginary line by the midline. And uh, the uh, carotid triangle is bounded posteriorly by the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid, superiorly by the posterior belly of the digastric and uh, anterior inferiorly, it is bounded by the inferior belly of the, uh, sorry, uh, superior belly of the uh, omohyoid muscle membrane. All right, can you please tell me what are the contents of the anterior triangle? So in the anterior triangle, it is subdivided into three triangles. In case of a uh, digastric triangle, the contents uh, of the digastric triangle or submandibular triangle is a submandibular gland, submandibular nodes, hypoglossal nerve, and the lingual nerve also. And um, in case of muscular triangle, uh, there are the strap muscles and the external jugular vein. And in case of cavity triangle, there is ansa cervical and uh, the carotid sheath containing the internal jugular vein, external uh, common carotid and external carotid, uh, common carotid artery and the vagus nerve. Okay, can you please tell me what are the nerves uh, which are at risk when you're excising the submandibular gland? So whenever we are excising the submandibular gland, there are actually three nerves which are, who are actually uh, at the risk of damage uh, that are uh, the lingual nerve, uh, which is uh, situated above, and uh, then uh, the marginal mandibular nerve, uh, which lies parallelly with the uh, it's branch of ramus of the mandible. Uh, marginal mandibular is a branch of the facial, a motor branch right. of the facial nerve. And, the and, all, uh, and the third one is the hypoglossal nerve, ma'am, right. which lies uh, below, ma'am. Okay, can you please tell me on, on the neck, if you can tell me the surface and of me, where exactly would you do cricothyroidectomy? Uh, I would like to do the uh, cricothyroidotomy uh, between the cricoid and thyroid ligament and in the cricothyroid membrane at the midline, which is actually called the anterior cricothyroid, uh, anterior cricothyroid ligament. What are the indications of doing this cricothyroidotomy? When would you do it? So it is a, uh, it is a um, emergency surgical uh, emergency procedure, emergency, procedure, emergency surgical, surgical procedure to maintain uh, patient's airway to uh, establish patient's patent airway, ma'am. Okay. Uh, it is included in the basic airway maneuver in case uh, in the ATLS guideline. All right. Uh, can you please tell me at what basic airway at adjunct? Sorry, ma'am. Yeah. Yes. At what vertebral level thyroid cart cartilage is located? At the level of C4, ma'am. Yeah, between C4 and C4. Okay. All right. Can you tell me what are the contents of posterior triangle? Uh, okay, ma'am. The, in the posterior triangle, there actually lies uh, the spinal, uh, the accessory nerve and uh, phrenic nerve, uh, then branches from the cervical plexus like uh, supraclavicular, uh, greater auricular, lesser occipital, transverse cervical nerve, and also the lower trunk of the brachial plexus. Okay, and you, in case of, uh, yes, yes ma'am, there are some other contents too. Yes, this red vessel. Can you please the, this is the um, right-sided common carotid artery. Can you please tell me the course of this vessel? So after originating from the uh, brachiocephalic trunk, it goes upwards uh, and passes through the uh, passes through the uh, anterior triangle of the neck, and at the level of the upper border of the uh, at the level of the uh, upper border of the thyroid cartilage, it is divided into external and internal carotid artery. And the internal carotid artery first goes uh, anteromedial to this external carotid artery, and external carotid li lies posterolateral. And 
then the internal cavity artery enters into the cranial cavity through the cavity canal in the petrous part of the temporal bone and after going into the cranial cavity it is uh, it gives its first branch the ophthalmic artery and also the subsequent anterior cerebral middle cerebral anterior communicating posterior communicating arteries and in case of external cavity artery after going upwards it gives uh, it enters into the uh, parotid gland and it gives some anterior branch posterior okay. branch and uh, you, also some terminal please, branch yeah uh, tell me there are some structures associated with common carotid artery yes uh, ma'am for example carotid body what is it and what's the function of it so ma'am uh, carotid body is uh, actually it is uh, the chemo receptor which is situated at the posterior aspect of the bifurcation of the carotid uh, common Very common good. carotid artery at the level of the uh, at the level of the C4 cartilage uh, C sorry ma'am at the level of the C4 vertebra what does it so, do so uh, it is actually a peripheral chemo receptor which actually uh, Maintains maintains, uh, maintains the respiratory uh, respiratory centers uh, through the peripheral stimulation, which is actually responsive to the decreased oxygen uh, PO two level, pressure, increased partial yes. pressure of carbon okay. dioxide level, and also hydrogen ion level in the blood yes. to some extent. What is carotid sinus? How is it different? Uh, carotid sinus carotid is body. actually it is called baroreceptor, which is situated just above the bifurcation of the common carotid artery at the posterior aspect of the internal carotid artery, and it actually responds. to the blood pre, uh, blood pressure of the uh, of the vascular system okay what is subclavian steel syndrome uh subclavian steel syndrome actually if there is an occlusion of the subclavian artery before the origin of the vertebral artery then one sided uh, vertebral uh, one sided opposite sided uh, blood actually goes through the vertebral artery and through the uh, spinal artery com uh, arteries communication goes to the same sided the occlusive sided vertebral artery and gives supply towards the okay occlusive Can side so whenever me, there is yes, yes ma'am the course of the external carotid artery please so external carotid after its origination at the level of the c4 it enters uh, it goes upwards and enters into the uh, parotid gland and then it gives uh, a deep branch that is called ascending pharyngeal artery and and anterior branch that is the lingual artery facial uh, facial artery and posteriorly it gives the posterior auricular artery occipital artery and goes upwards after going upwards uh, in the parotid gland it gives two terminal branches that is the maxillary artery and the superficial temporal very artery very good very good can you please tell me what is the nerve which passes anterior to it uh, yes ma'am uh, it is uh, the hypoglossal nerve very good. which is most vulnerable to damage during carotid and arterial tunnel question please yes ma'am Tell me all the branches of the external carotid artery, please. Okay, ma'am. Uh, the branches actually six branches and two terminal branches that are the uh, ascending pharyngeal, superior thyroid artery, lingual artery, facial artery, uh, posterior auricular artery, occipital artery, and the terminal two actually the maxillary and superficial temporal Very artery. Very good. Excellent. Perfect. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Welcome. Recently, you I think you have read. So if you have read and understood, kindly please tell me what is uh yes what are the nutritional options that you will suggest for this patient? <coughs> yes, according to yes. Okay. I'm 65 year old patient with type can, 2 diabetes on oral we, medication with can, can, can we mute the the phone of Yes, the... I'm sorry. Yes, uh 
can you please tell me what what are the nutritional options that you will suggest yes, for this? As patient? regard as regard is a nutritional option, it can yes. be divided into uh, parenteral and the non parenteral parenteral yes. uh, through the central venous line or pec line. Yes. And the non parenteral through as oral nasogastric nasogenesis percutaneous endoscopic gastrostomy and yes. jejunostomy. Okay, considering uh, that you have to insert uh, uh, total parental nutrition. So according yes. to NICE guidelines, what are the instructions or how would you do it? For insertion of central venous line? Total parental nutrition you have to give to the patient. So according to the NICE guidelines, how would you do it? What yes, is the according procedure? to what is the, uh, according to the central line insertion must be firstly Not, according to the nutrition itself tpn yes uh, tpn yes yes yes, yes. Uh, as regard tpn uh, should be insert uh, should be uh, given uh, through central venous line due to less osmolarity less than 100 milli osmol and yes, yes, but according to NICE guidelines in United Kingdom in UK you follow NICE guidelines so how would you yes Maybe you were telling me, no, you were telling me hyperosmolality. So how would you insert? Ultrasound guided? Okay, you'll read more. All right, can you please- According to the according to the center of venous line or according to, uh, or, uh, to total parenteral nutrition? Center yes. of venous line, ultrasonic guided with post-operative radiology due to exclude pneumothorax and is the site of the central line at the junction between superior vena cava and right atrium. Okay, uh, this patient is a post of a fourth post of day, had Crohn's disease. So what nutrition would you suggest? How would you give, how would you calculate the nutrition for this patient? According to the calculation, the, usually the, uh, the supporting uh, requirement will include carbohydrates, fats and yes. protein. Yes. Uh, carbohydrate about 50%, fat about 30%, percentage yes. uh, and the the other uh, including protein trace elements and water the okay. must include uh, uh, sodium potassium calcium and magnesium chloride including in the tbn okay so what yes. are the what are the indications what are the things that you consider before uh, writing or before giving tbn to indication patient? for indication for tbn Yes, please. There is a general general indication and the cut indication. General indication yes. form of severe malnourishment, uh, more yes. than ten percent of uh, weight loss of the original weight. The second one is severe pain, severe trauma, severe malnourishment, sepsis with multiple organ failure or multiple organ dysfunction, a yes. gut problem in form of anterior cutaneous fistula, inflammatory bowel disease as ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease, short bowel syndrome, and also radiation enteritis. Okay, can you please tell me what are the advantages of giving TPN over enteral nutrition? As regard uh, uh, T, uh, T, uh, TPN uh, yes. rather than in enteral. Yes, please. So what are yes, the advantages? Regard, yes, the advantage is that it can be uh, the, uh, the intake of calorie is directly without exhaustion and uh, of uh, 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 the gut uh, it can be suitable uh, for substitution from uh, in short bowel syndrome uh, support with uh, uh, direct calories and the uh, estimation estimation of the caloric caloric requirement precisely rather than uh, uh, enteral nutrition um, and the suitable for the patient as uh, in malabsorption syndrome with uh, with non suitable please. yes okay Good, thank you. Can you please tell me what are the electrolytes which are contained by the TPN? Yes, sodium, potassium, magnesium, and yes. calcium chloride. Okay, can you please tell me how, uh, what is the normal nitrogen requirement of an adult human being? Nitrogen requirement? Yes, please. Yes, please. No, can be, uh, can pass this question, please? Okay. Can you please tell me what are the signs of malnutrition that you look for? When would you decide patient needs TPN or enteral nutrition? Yeah, as so as signs regards of signs, of mal, of signs of malnutrition. Please. Malnutrition, yes. We follow uh, the firstly as the BMI and the weight of the patient, the okay. biceps, biceps and triceps thickness, 
yes. uh, yeah, but this is the post-op post patient, please. Focus on the post-op patient. This is post -op today. Yes, how post would you know patient is uh, undergoing malnutrition? Yes, uh, according to the uh, albumin, serum albumin. Very good, and very good, yes. And yeah. for wound and healing? Uh, wound, uh, yes, for wound healing yes. and, uh, and uh, uh, hemoglobin itself. Okay, very uh, good. Also, yes, and also uh, the electrolytes and trace element also can yes. be uh, uh, be low in level in uh, malnourished patients. Very good. Yes. yes. Okay. Can you please tell me this TPN contains dextrose? What is dextrose? Can you tell me the definition? How how dextrose is different from sugar? I didn't hear the question. What is the difference between? Uh, yes, between dextrose and sugar. I don't okay. know. I, All right. Uh, can you uh, tell me how would you calculate the nutrition for a patient who has undergone a burn? Or compared to a patient who has undergone a surgery? Is there any uh, formula to calculate, yes, the requirements? As regards the caloric requirement, will increase up to uh, from 25 to 35 into yes, uh, yes. about 45, about 45 yes. in severe burn, uh, uh, kilocalorie per, per, per kilogram. Can you please tell me what are the complications uh, if you keep on giving TPN to a patient? So what are the complications that you should look out for? As regard, as regard TPN complication is line related and the yes. uh, formula related. Regarding line related, maybe infection thrombosis and the during insertion Kylosorax, hemosorax, pneumosorax, and uh, obstruction. And as regard to the TBN itself, can yes. lead to uh, as hyperglycemia, hypoglycemia, hyperammonia, uh, deficiency of essential fatty acids, uh, also refeeding syndrome. Yes. Uh, what is refeeding syndrome, please? Re refeeding syndrome is a uh, massive deterioration in the patient condition due to sudden uh, sudden uh, introduction of uh, nutrition in uh, chronic malnourished patient leading to uh, sudden uh, intravascular uh, uh, intracellular shift of uh, fluid and electrolytes into yes. the cell due to due to uh, rapid introduction of uh, nutrition in high dose more than 50 percent uh, in form of uh, encephalopathy in, uh, and uh, azotemia very good okay bell has gone but uh, can you please tell me what happens to a patient who keeps on taking uh, TPN for a very, very long time? This patient has a Crohn's disease and undergone um, defunctional ileostomy. So if you yes. keep on giving TPN to this patient for a very longer time, how the gut will uh, respond to it? Yes, this is one of the side effects of TBN is gut atrophy due to Very lack good. of intraluminal trophic yes. signal to the to the to the gut, and yes. will be will lead to what's called the bacterial translocation also. Very good. Yes, that can lead to sepsis, blood sepsis. Yes, yes, yes. line related sepsis. Yes. Very good, excellent. Right, good. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. But I. I missed can, you, can you please tell me how would you read this uh, image? What is it showing? Yes, this is X-ray abdomen that is showing characteristic dilatation of the small bowel with yes. characteristic uh, stock uh, of coins, appearance of Stack jejunal of dilatation. Very good, very good. This yes. arrow is showing. Excellent. Yes. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Here is your question, please.
right. So if you have read and understood, considering it's surgical and ostentation, kindly please tell me what are you looking at in this image? Can this you is tell the me? second screen. Uh, this one pointing at which view is like a screen? Yes. Which one is the zygote screen? Which arrow? The one pointing at three? Or uh, what? One? Which, which one is the zygote screen? One. Okay, one. All right. Yes. And three, this one? Uh, greater splanchonic nerve. Okay. Splanchonic nerve. nerve. Okay. This one? A sympathetic trunk. Okay. Right. Can you please tell me uh, what is this organ? Uh, is this, the heart? Uh, yes, heart. Okay. What is 15? Uh, mean bronchus. Okay. Uh, there is a space here in front of the heart and the, th the sternum or the interior chest wall. What is this space called? Can you please Pericard tell me the name and the boundaries? Pericardium? Please? No, not pericardium. <sighs> this space is uh, anterior medistinum. Anterior medistinum. You, uh, please tell me the boundaries of anterior medistinum. Of anterior medistinum? Yes, please. Uh... Uh, okay, anterior medistinum. Boundaries? Yeah, anterior one, yes. If you can't, then please tell me the posterior medistinum's boundaries. A posterior? Yes, any any boundaries you can tell me. Yes, posterior medistinum anteriorly is, uh, uh, is the heart and the reflected part of the frame. Uh, posteriorly is the uh, vertebra. Uh, okay, the vertebra. good. From, at, uh, from, uh, T to, from T uh, to L, T1 to L2, and um, as um, and uh, yes, um, and what are the contents of posterior medistinum? Yes, it contains um, esophagus, thoracic aorta, and thoracic duct. Um, Very good. Uh, and um, can you have uh, a guess and tell me how many medistinums there are? Anterior and the and, uh, anterior mediastinum, posterior mediastinum, and uh, middle, uh, intermediate mediastinum, and superior mediastinum. Okay. What is uh, what is the contents of middle mediastinum? Um. Okay. This you will we will move on. Can you identify all the structures? What is what? one, please? Can you identify all the structures, please? Yes. Um, what is one, please? Okay, one, so, so yes. What is two? Here is two. Three, four. Okay, right. Sorry, I, I have uh, this connection okay. by, by I WhatsApp ring, sorry. All right. Eleven is sternum. Uh, three, uh, three is um, three is the main bronchus, and uh, four. Okay, and four is uh, pulmonary veins. Okay, what is and eight, seven. please? Eight. Yes. Uh, cut section of the uh, cut section from the heart. No liver. Uh, sorry, oh. from the liver is. What is nine? Nine. This no, I. Diaphragm. Diaphragm. Okay. Yes. And, and this, this is, is heart. Yes, heart. And okay. Yes, and number one is uh, our, uh, our, um, for the aorta. Aorta. Yes. No. Uh, sorry, azygos, azygos. No, not azygos. Not in this one. Posterior medicine. Okay, if you can tell me uh, from A to G, what are the what are the structures? What are you looking at? Mm. 
It's from A. Yes, please. Yes, um, Any structures that you can recognize? Okay, tell me, uh, all right, tell me the tributaries of a zygous strain. You mentioned it very time, Sorry, many have... times. Do you remember the tributaries of a zygous vein? Okay, can you please tell me what are the structures which pass through the hilum of the lung? Uh, sorry, mom, I, um, I have... Uh... You're on call or something, right? I have. Can anyone else tell me? Dr. Mohammed, can you please tell me what are the structures which pass through the hilum of the lung? Yes, the most anterior one are the guard relation. So yes, the division of the pulmonary vein, then after that, the, the pulmonary artery, then yes. the uh, bronchus, after that bronchial artery, bronchial vein, lymph yes. node, and the autonomic nervous. This is the structure of the hilum. Very good. Okay. Uh, can you or Dr. Avishay can recognize these structures? What what is A B? Ma'am, uh, I think uh, uh, number A is the posterior uh, intercostal vein in the intercostal space. B is the intercostal artery. Uh, C and uh, number C. Um, just a second, ma'am. It is the is it the cross of the diaphragm? I don't remember C much, but the, the picture is superior superior uh, intercostal vein. Okay, and D? Maybe. D? As it goes vein. Okay, E? Right main bronchus. F? Uh, pulmonary uh, pain. Vegas uh, nerve. F is Vegas nerve. F. Okay, and G? Plura, I guess. Um, I guess maybe. Um, could be hard to check it. So I have found it. So I'll tell you. So, okay. no, I don't know, G. I don't know. Okay. All right. Uh, can you please tell me the tributaries of the zygous vein? Yes, right, superior intercostal vein, hemiasgus and accessory hemiasgus. Yes. Okay. Um, uh, pericardial veins, mediastinal veins, yes. lower uh, right intercostal veins, uh, esophageal veins, uh, bronchial veins. Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thanks, ma'am. Thank you. And now I'll tell you these all I have come to know. Okay, A is right intercostal artery and vein. That is A, because artery and vein are both together. Yeah. I, right uh, sympathetic chain on yes. the right side. So it's the sympathetic chain. C. Okay. Yeah, both C. And then C is right phrenic nerve. Okay, right phrenic. That's okay, yes, ma'am. This one. And then D here is superior vena cava. Okay. Yes. E is right principal bronchus. Yes, Dr. Dr. Mohammed was, right. was absolutely right. Yeah. And then F is right pulmonary vein. Yes, I told you. It's pulmonary yeah. vein. Yeah, and it's then vein, not pegas. G pegus. is pericardial sac. So it's heart. It's pericardial Okay, pericardial sac. Yes, I yes. told you it's the heart, the vertex. So it's right at the end of the pericardium. Yes. Right. And the medicinums. Um, Basically, this was, yes, that's all right. I can understand. We understood. Uh, basically, uh, yes, this was medicinum and azygos and sympathetic. Uh, but then, yeah. 